Hi and welcome back to Chestfield Community Connection. I'm Jane, your local realtor here in St. Louis and the surrounding areas. And today I am joined by Tom Blood, who is not only an, an artist, but a writer as well. And he is going to introduce his beautiful artwork to us today. So thanks for joining us today. Absolutely, thank you for having me. You're welcome. <laughs> Would you mind starting by just sharing with our listeners a little bit about your journey in art and how this has all come to be? Absolutely. Yeah. So I, uh, when I was a kid, I've always loved to draw. And in high school, I did lots of murals in high school, things like that. I was offered an art scholarship. I realized that I probably could not make a living as an artist. So I've always liked to just create things. And I decided I wanted to make TV commercials when I was in high school. Oh, so wow. I set my goals on becoming someone in advertising. And I wanted to be a writer. So I went to the University of Missouri Columbia Journalism School and graduated from there. Wow. And I got a job uh, after interviewing in New York and failing, and then Chicago and failing. I finally got a job here in St. Louis, and it turned out to be a tremendous opportunity. I'm born and raised St. Louis, St. Louis, and okay. I've always loved St. Louis. So the chance to work here, and I got to work for a great agency, and early on in my career, I got to do tons of TV commercials. Any that we might and, recognize? Uh, going back a ways, I used to do this stuff for Mark Twain Banks and Pasta House Company okay. and the Missouri Division of Tourism. Okay. And so those, those are some notable ones, but I also did Six Flags. and So I've, I've done commercials, and the older I've gotten, the less commercials I do. And these days I do primarily social media. I still do advertising and marketing communications, but I've always loved to paint. Mm -hmm. And I was actually engaged when I was in my late 20s. And for Christmas, my fiance gave me uh, an airbrush. And oh. she said, all right, Mr. Artist. She was, she was a designer, but I always, we used to go to galleries and I would say, oh, I could do that. And she was just like, no, you don't know anything about that. And so she gave me this airbrush and on, we called off our engagement soon after. Oh, and, you didn't like the gift? Uh, no, it, it, was, it was not gift related. There are there some other issues, but uh, so subsequently I met the, uh, my current wife, who I've been with for going on 30 years, and she totally supports my artistic craziness. And one person in Clayton who owned a thing called the Creative Gallery, she gave me an opportunity. She had me with another artist named Stan Solomon. Yes. And I was like the, 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 the second tier of that duo, but we got a lot of people at the opening of the show and I sold a few paintings mm -hmm. and she said from now on as long as you keep painting I'll give you shows wow. and so we did that up until our third child Catherine was born and we converted our downstairs painting room my, my painting room into a downstairs bedroom so I stopped painting for 17 years my son my oldest son Tom Jr who's going to be playing at this opening on Thursday night he, uh, he gave me two small canvases for Father's Day. I think it was seven Father's Days ago. And he said, paint again. And I was extremely intimidated because I had not painted in 17 years. Really rusty. And these were tiny canvases and I had always done large scale stuff. Yeah. I had no idea what to do. But I, I painted something and I still have it. And it's a house and it was just a ladder leaning against the sky. And it did not look that great. <laughs> but it was enough that I said, I like doing this. And so I, I painted the next one. And then I went out and I bought a canvas. Uh, and that got me going. And since then, I think uh, I've probably painted more than 100 paintings in the last six or seven years. I've, I've sold work on four different continents. Uh, I've got more than 250,000 people have seen my work on two different websites I'm on. So. I've, I've had a great time creating art, and I've, I've realized it's a gift. You're good at it. And if, if you're given a gift, you should use it. Absolutely. Now, speaking of gifts, one of your newest paintings is actually behind us here. The, the gentleman who's in the water there, can yes. you give us a little bit of a um, story about what that's all about? Well, anybody that's familiar with Rene Magritte would recognize this man in the bowler hat. Yes. I have, uh, Magritte is my painting hero. 
and many of my thoughts and explorations and painting or ideas that he's done that I have kind of reinterpreted. This is nothing he's ever done except the, the man in the bowler hat has shown up in more than 20 or 30 of my paintings through the last, I don't know, well, he, I was doing the man in the bowler hat before I stopped painting. And I just, when I discovered Magritte, I'm just like, he had the most amazing mind and he painted ideas. Mm -hmm. And that's what I like to do. I like to paint ideas. And so this, this one, I was just, uh, for some reason, I, I actually did a painting very similar to this with the exact same title called No Man is an Island. Oh. But I, I saw this beautiful sky and water that I often, I use photography for my background. And I, I saw this and it was just, it was an awesome, just the, the pink and the blues, I really liked it a lot. I'm just like, I'm gonna stick the man in there. And so that became the painting. So all of my paintings always start off as small sketches. And I've got a little notebook that is filled with all of my thoughts and I never paint anything until I've sketched it out first. And probably my best ability as an artist is my ability to scale. Mm. So I can take a little small painting or a small illustration yes. done in ink or pencil that's this big, and then I just scale it up to whatever size painting I want to do, and somehow I'm able to make it work. Yeah. <laughs> and do you use primarily oil paints? No, these are almost all acrylic. They're beautiful, they're so colorful, they're really vivid, and they're for sale. So the yeah. public are able to come. You've got an event, do you want to talk about your event coming up next week? Yes. Yeah. So uh, I have this gallery space. This is where the James Michael Smith exhibition took place here in the district mm -hmm. and it's a tremendous space the That's the right. carpet will make your eyes go a little bit wonky You're cross -eyed. <laughs> right but uh, the uh, it, it's just a giant open inviting space with excellent lighting and it's it's perfect for my art which is bright and colorful it really, and, and yeah. it really shines in here it does. So I'm, I'm having an opening on September 22nd and the 23rd uh, from 5 to 8 p.m. each evening. Okay. And my son, Tom Jr., will be playing Thursday night. He's a musician and a singer, and oh. he's quite talented. Oh. So he'll be there from 6 to 8. Okay. So we'll have a little entertainment. We're not doing much in the line of food or drinks. Okay. But we're, this, this is to come see the art, and hopefully people are interested and maybe want to purchase something. Absolutely. Because I've, I've priced every single painting below what they are on my website. Okay. So if you're looking for the holidays coming up That's for a, a gift idea. for yourself or someone for a friend, this I, I recommend you come out and at least shop because they're, they're fun. What I'm going to be doing is a series of events. Okay. I'm going to bring in some guest artists in October, November, and December. And I think we'll get some synergy and some additional people wanting to come in and keep see the fresh. art and keep yeah, it fresh. Keep it fresh. And how will people hear about these events? What's the best way? Well, I'm promoting everything on Facebook and my uh, TomBloodArt.com is my Facebook page. Tomblood, TomBloodArt.com. Yes. Okay. So the event next week, is there? Is, is it free? Absolutely free. Okay, it's yes. free. So yes. let's just say it's 5 to 8 next Thursday, the yep. 22nd, and then, is that right, Thursday and Friday? Yep, and then the exact same time frame Friday. Yeah, for Friday. Okay. okay. And then I'm, and also I'm doing by appointment only okay. uh, for later on. If someone's really interested and wants to see and wants a private showing, my uh, phone number is on all these things, or right. they can also email me or text me and get a hold of me and we can set something up and I'd be happy to come by and show them whatever they're interested in. Wonderful, and you'll be here for the event next week. So Absolutely. that's gonna be brilliant for you. You need to come out and have a look at this. Every single painting in here has a story that's written next to it. So every single story kind of relates to what they're seeing, but when you look at the picture, you don't necessarily know without reading the story. So it kind of puts right. everything together, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah. Uh, also, I'm since being a writer, all of my painting titles are plays on words or or they will give you clues as to what the painting is about. Yes. And it's a man in front of an elevator with a giant boulder that is inside the elevator. And the name of the painting is called Going Down. The elevator is indicating down, but 
that in itself, I, I wrote that or I created that one with thinking about corporate America and how much it has changed since the pandemic. Uh. And that the, the modern office building yes. and corporations and the way we work, all of that it just seems to be going down to me a little bit. It's, so that, that was Very kind of a, a little play on words. Very clever. You talk about the one of my favorites of yours, Tom, because <laughs> I, I'm an avid golden retriever lover, but there's one that you've got with a golden retriever. Will you talk about the story of that one? Absolutely. So it's a painting and I called Loose Ends. And initially when you look at the painting, it looks like there's either a, a mirror or a photograph or a painting leaning against a wall and that's your initial look at it that's what it seems and there's a dog looking out at the ocean but if you look at it a little further there's a ball of yarn that actually leads into the painting itself yes. and so it's just like well it can't be a mirror because it climbs inside of that and it's not a painting so it's just it's a it's meant to confuse the viewer and if you <laughs> it confused if you, me for sure <laughs> if you look even a little further at what the dog is looking at there are two people out in the ocean swimming oh, I didn't see and that. Wow. so that's the dog is waiting for its master and whoever else to come in from the water and there's the the van shoe and that is the best van shoe i've ever painted of course it's the only one i've ever painted <laughs> so there is lots and lots of details to pay attention to so as we were saying before we interviewed today you could literally walk around and look at every painting in here and read the stories and you'd be here for at least an hour right yes there's, just, yes. there's that much information it's there, there's a total of 60 paintings on display fantastic and each one has a little story to it so and you you can create your own stories that's uh that's the way a lot of my paintings are i want people to look at them and develop their own storylines but they're all they're, they're kind of built to make you think and make you wonder i i like to do art that makes people happy yeah. i like to do art that makes people think mm -hmm. uh you know I've, I've done some abstract things that are in the back room that uh those are more playful things but the majority of my work, I want to uh, paint ideas and I want those ideas to somehow connect with the viewer when they look at it yes. and they get their own interpretation of it. Brilliant. And that's, that's the beauty of art, right? The creativity just flows when you look at something. You can see your interpretation, but then you'll have your own Absolutely. interpretation as yes. well. And pretty much I can see that you love to paint happy things because of the brightness of all the colors. I yes. mean, you can't be sad looking at the bright colors. Well, thank you for joining us today. I'm excited, guys. Make sure you make the effort to come out here, meet Tom, meet his son, listen to some great music, maybe have a glass of wine, and enjoy just touring around and looking at the beautiful works that Tom has done. Really fantastic. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. And, and as always, if you'd like to hear more of the things that we've got going on in Chesterfield and the surrounding areas, make sure you subscribe. Click the little bell so you're notified when my next video comes out. And until next time, stay safe and make it a great day.